What up guys, what I'm about to make is one of my favorite shredding meals. Most people go with chicken breast because it's lean, but what's even leaner than that is fish. But I think people shy away from that because when you start meal prepping, fish has a tendency to start getting smelly even though it's extremely low in fat. With my recipe, it actually tastes better over time and I'm gonna show you guys what I make. The final macros on this meal is per serving is 10 grams of fat with 50 grams of protein. So that's a five to one protein to fat ratio and it's really delicious and it's easy to make which is why I like to make this dish. Behind me, I already have the rice going because that usually takes the longest. On my rice cooker, it takes anywhere between 40 to 45 minutes. So I like to prepare that first. Then the second thing I like to do is to take the fish and I like to put a little light dry rub on it. You don't have to um, let it marinate for too long because fish takes up flavor very, very easily. So I like to dab it down to make sure that it's a little bit drier. And what's cool about these, so I got swai fillets. What I like about swai, it's very, very light in flavor. It almost tastes like there's like, it's not even a fish, which is why I like it. And you can usually get these at the uh, frozen aisle at the grocery store. And it almost doesn't even matter if you defrost them or not because fish cooks so fast. So what I like to do is I take some salt, sprinkle it on, sprinkle it on. Keep in mind, um, you wanna be very conscious of not salting it too much because fish, since it's light in flavor, um, it's very easy to over salt. So you don't wanna do that. Then I take white pepper. Like that. And then I go like that. And I rub it, the, the double, double finger technique to make sure it's nice and even. These are one of these dishes where it doesn't have to be perfect because later on everything's gonna cook together so that like all the flavors will end up gelling together anyways. If you're a beginner at cooking, this is totally meant for you because there's a lot of room for error and it'll still taste really, really good. I, I know you like chef experts because everyone's a Michelin star chef online is looking like, what are you doing? You keep reaching into the same seasoning bowl. Don't worry, I'm just seasoning this and then afterwards I'm gonna toss all of it into my son's mouth, so it doesn't really matter. The thing that shy people away from fish is that it gets smelly, right? But the cool neutralizer is ginger. Once you put ginger on fish, it almost completely like removes that fishiness so that throughout the week, the fish doesn't get stinkier. And that's also something that a lot of people like to do when they're cooking pork belly. Like they'll soak pork belly in ginger and water first so it gets rid of that porky flavor. So after you have it like this, I like to cut it up to little sections. Like that. Almost into like little, little fillet actions, you know what I mean? Like that. Cut it up. And what's cool is what you see here will last three meals. So if you wanna cook for even more, you just double up the contents and then that's six meals already. So what's cool about this dish is that it has two protein sources. You have the fish and you have the tofu. Tofu is actually pretty good uh, protein to fat ratio, it's two to one. So I believe it's like, it'll be somewhere per serving um, 10 grams of protein to five grams of fat. But what's cool is since you have two protein sources, it makes the dish very interesting. So that's really important if you're meal prepping, right? Cause you're eating the same thing every single day and you can get bored of foods. So the more interesting you can make a dish, the better. Like sometimes I'll cook this for the whole week and maybe by Thursday or Friday, like I'm starting to get bored of it, I'll just add a little bit of sriracha to it, like something that's also uh, relatively low in fat and then it changes up the dish completely. There's a lot of things I like about this dish from the protein to fat ratio to how nostalgic it is because my mom used to make something similar. 
but my favorite, favorite part about this is when you're meal prepping, you want everything to be convenient and time efficient, right? And usually the most time consuming things is the more things you have to cook, the harder it is. So for example, you have to cook your carb, then you have to cook your protein, then you gotta cook your veggies. What's cool about this is both the protein and the veggies are gonna be cooking together, so you save time there, and that's my favorite thing about it. Next up is garlic. What's really cool about this dish too is since everything's just gonna be simmering together, the garlic doesn't have to be pretty. You just have to smash it so that later when you kind of pan fry it a little bit, a little bit of the flavor comes out, but most of the flavor will come out when it's simmering in the chicken broth. My technique of smashing it is I just take the flat side of the blade, put it on top and go, Wata! I don't know if this is safe or not, but that's how I was taught to do it. Um, I mean, I guess it's better than if you go like this. That's really bad, so I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't even try that for those of you guys that have been thinking about it. Uh, I guess a safer way for not as advanced as this is to take a whole handful of garlic, put it behind your tire, and then just drive backwards. Or uh, if you wanna be extra safe about it, put it right here and just squish it like that. As you can see, uh, I'm not cutting up the garlic into pieces like da, 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 da. I'm just smashing it because all I wanna do is release a little bit of it, and then when I put it on the frying pan, fry it around a little bit, but most of the garlic flavor is gonna come out with the chicken broth. Like when, once it's simmering in there, that's really what's gonna bring it out. So this is also like a very time efficient thing where you don't have to spend too much time uh, mincing the garlic. Next up is bok choy. Bok choy is a green, it's a vegetable that has a lot of micronutrients, so this is also very, very nutritious. With these guys, you wanna cut off the bottom because it's kind of tough and it'll take forever for this part to cook. And since you want everything like to cook relatively at the same time, you don't wanna deal with these dudes. And also back in the ancient days, like in the Tang Dynasty, after they cut these, they would give it to the warriors and on the battlefield, they'll throw them out like ninja stars. And that's how wars were won and lost. It was pretty crazy. If you cut bok choy too, and it starts falling apart like this, and you're like, oh no, no! Don't get scared, it's supposed to. That's the way it grows. And then sometimes you'll notice there's a lot of dirt on the inside. So you might want to re-rinse it again. With the bok choy, um, you just kind of cut it into like inch, inch and a half pieces. And I like to uh, leave like the top end with a little bit more leaf. Cause when you cook these things, it'll like shrivel up. So if you end up cutting it like this, this piece is gonna shrivel up really, really tiny. And then later on when you're eating it, like the mouth feel is kind of weird, you know, cause it's just like this shrivel up thing. Whereas if you leave, uh, if you leave a little bit, stupid ass puns, if you leave a little bit of the leaf, then when it shrivels up, you have a nice little bite section here and then you have like the little leafy part. All right, so now it's time to cook. Turn on the fire right there. Bada bing, boom, boom. Boom, 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 bing, bada bing, bing, bing. And I have it on hot, and I take a fat-free cooking spray, especially since we're shredding, and just coat it enough where the garlic doesn't stick. And the first thing we'll be putting on is the garlic. Now that the oil is no longer popping and locking, because it's all hot now, turn it down to a medium, because you don't want these guys to get brown too fast, and then throw in the garlic. Oh, 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 now that's the sound we were looking for. Once you get the garlic a little bit brown, all you're trying to do is pull some of that flavor out. Then you gotta cook the next thing that takes the longest, which is the bok choy. And then you just mix it around a little bit. And let's say you already had a protein made and you don't want to make this dish. This could be a side dish on its own. Just stir fried bok choy with garlic. You just sprinkle a little bit of salt, a little bit of white pepper, and then you call it a day too. And just like this seasoning will take your vegetable to the next level, maybe even a dash of sesame oil so you'll never get bored of your vegetables. So when you're cooking and meal prepping, the oil that you choose is dependent on your macros. Uh, for us, we don't need it to be that lean. And I just remembered sesame oil is really important, so I'm gonna put a little dash of it. 
and sesame oil a little goes a long way. So as soon as the leaves start wilting a little bit, you want to turn the fire down because you don't want to overcook the veggies. And now it's time to put in the tofu and the fish. So throw in the fish. And then throw in the tofu. So as you can see, there's hella protein in this dish. And then you throw in some ginger. And this is a very important, like this is one of the main flavorings of this dish. And it really helps to neutralize that fishy flavor. And you just mix everything around just a little bit. When I said like, this is kind of like a beginner dish where like the seasoning, you don't have to get it perfect. What's cool about that is later on, I'm gonna put in the chicken broth and it's gonna mix everything together. So if you see a clump, that's too big, yeah, you want to separate a little bit, but if some of the seasonings or garlic or ginger is all on one side, you don't have to worry about it too much because eventually everything will mix together. So at this phase, it's really, really important to get the fish to touch the pan. We have so many ingredients in here. Um, it might be just sitting on top of vegetable, but we do want the fish to cook about halfway before we like steam, AKA boil the rest. So I'm making sure all the fish is touching the pan. So at least it gets half cooked and then the other half will happen once I put the uh, chicken broth in. Now that the fish is halfway cooked and you can always tell because half of it is opaque and the other half is still kind of translucent. This is the perfect time to pour in the chicken broth and you just kind of just pour it all around. And not too much. I do it where it's like literally in half of the ingredients. And you do like the juice, and I'll explain a why later. I'll just explain it right now, that's what I'm talking about. So the reason why the juice is so good is once you have the chicken broth going and it has the tofu, the ginger, the garlic, the fish, the bok choy, all that flavor in the chicken broth, one of my favorite things to do is after I take all of the ingredients and put it on a bed of rice, I take that juice and I pour it on the rice. And when you mix it with the rice, really good. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So you take some of this veggie action, you know what I'm saying? With the garlic right here. Oh, Jesus. This is why no one hires me at a restaurant. We put it right there, get some of this fish action, you know what I'm saying? Like that. And then before I make a giant mess, I'm gonna just put it on the side. <laughs> this looks like a second grader made it. But my favorite part, like I was telling you, you get some of this juice that has garlic and ginger. Oh man, pour it down the rice. Like that. Oh my, oh, 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 oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, 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 look at that, oh. Oh, oh my, oh, oh my, oh. Got my rice, and then get a little bit of bok choy action, oh yeah. And then a little bit of fish. Look at that, that's a perfect bite right there. Boom. That was super delicious, super easy, super quick to make. As you see, I cooked the protein and the veggies together and the macros are insane. It's a five to one ratio, 50 grams of protein to 10 grams of fat. And not to mention, swai is a very clean fish, so it tastes really good throughout the week. And later on, if you wanna spice things up, you can add whatever hot sauce that you want. Thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.